So yesterday you were supposed to read the Pecos Bill Tall Tale reading passage and answer the questions. So I'm going to read it to you and then I'll go through the questions and give you the correct answers. So it says Pecos Bill. <clears throat> the American frontier is filled with legends of extraordinary people. The heroes in these stories were as great as the land itself. These tales were passed down through generations from one storyteller to the next. Sharing these legends helped to keep the spirit of America alive. Back in the days when Pecos Bill was a baby, folks decided that New England was just too crowded. One day, his father said to his mother, We're moving west, Ma. Pack your bags. We'll be leaving before sundown. So Ma and Pa packed their belongings in a wagon, gathered their 15 children, and headed west. The journey was rough as they crossed miles of rugged land in the scorching heat. One particularly blistering afternoon, the wagon train came to a river that needed crossing. Pecos Bill crawled out of the wagon, preparing to take a dip in the cool water, when he was picked up by the current and washed downstream. The baby would have drowned for sure if a mother coyote wouldn't have seen him. She grabbed him by the scruff of his neck, which is the back of his neck, yanked him out of the river, and took Bill back to her den. The coyote raised Bill as if he were her own son. Bill spent his days wrestling bighorn sheep, chasing lizards, and howling at the moon. As the years sailed by, Bill entirely forgot that he was even a human at all. One evening, Pecos Bill was wrangling a catfish when a cowboy walked by. What in tarnation are you doing out here, boy? the cowboy asked. Bill explained that he was a coyote and he was hunting for his lunch. The cowboy looked baffled. You don't have a tail, boy. Bill whipped around and for the first time realized that maybe he wasn't a coyote after all. Bill agreed to join the cowboy and move to a nearby frontier town. It wasn't long before Pecos Bill wanted to start his own gang of cowboys. He set out in search of the toughest, mangiest, most fearless men he could find. Bill stumbled upon an angry rattlesnake while walking through the canyon. Some say the snake was as long as the equator, while others argued that it was five feet longer. The snake was fixing to have a real conniption, which is a problem. He shook his tail, opened his long fangs, and took a quick snap at Bill. The snake fought hard, but Bill fought harder. In a matter of minutes, Bill squeezed all the poison out of that snake, leaving him skinny as a bootlace. Bill draped the rattler around his neck and continued on his journey. Little did Bill know, a mountain lion as big as a rail car was watching him from a cliff. That ornery mountain lion pounced right on top of Bill, and the two wrestled in a cloud of dust. Ornery means like angry, um, stubborn... Stuff like that. It didn't take long for Bill to put the beast in a headlock, and he made the giant cat cry, Uncle. Bill decided to saddle the mountain lion and ride him across the desert. When Pecos Bill finally arrived in Texas, he built the biggest ranch folks had ever seen. He used his rattlesnake rope as a lasso at the bulls in the southwest. He and his men wrangled cattle from sunup to sundown. When the weather got too dry, Bill lassoed all the water from the Rio Grande River and dumped it in the dried-up grasses. One afternoon, Bill was relaxing by an old sagebush, when a big black cyclone came barreling across the horizon. A cyclone is a tornado. He tried to run, but Bill was scooped up by the cyclone, only to be carried all the way across Texas to Death Valley, California. The earth dented down a few hundred feet as Bill landed with a bang after the cyclone tossed him like an old sock. The desert of Death Valley is still 280 feet below sea level until this very day. It was here that Bill met Lightning, the fastest horse in the West. The two became the best of friends as they burned the breeze through the desert back to Texas. Pecos, Bill, and Lightning were traveling along as they came across a shallow stream and saw a woman riding the back of a catfish. Bill had never met anyone as wild as she was, and he quickly became sweet on old Slewfoot Sue. 
On the day of their wedding, Sue wore a long white dress with a steel bustle as she rode lightning down the aisle. After the shindig was over, lightning bucked at all the excitement, and Sue was shot clear into the sky. She fell through the clouds and did a loop around the moon before coming back to Earth. When Sue hit the ground, she landed on her steel dress bustle and bounced right back up. Bill used his rattlesnake rope to lasso her, but he was yanked right up too. Pecos Bill and Slewfoot Sue were never seen again. Some folks say they must have used their boot spurs to grab a hold of the moon's craters. Some folks say they are still living there and happily raising a pack of coyote children of their own. So question one asked, which best describes the story? The story is a biography because it's about a person's life. It's nonfiction because people moved west in wagons. It's a tall tale because the details are exaggerated. Or it's a fable because the readers are supposed to learn a lesson. Now, did it tell us anywhere that Pecos Bill was a real person? No, so we know it's not biography. And although people did move west in wagons, is it just about people moving west? No. Is it a fable trying to teach you a life lesson? No. So that only leaves you with question or with answer C. Which words could be used to describe Pecos Bill? Choose the best two answers. So you need two answers. And you're describing Pecos Bill. So was he fearful? Was he scared of things? No. Was he fearless? Yes. Was he adventurous? Yes. Was he lazy? No. So that leaves you with B and C. Which sentence below helps to explain your answer to the question above? So it's asking about describing Pecos Bill. So is it back in the day when Pecos Bill was a baby? Folks decided that New England was just too crowded? Does that have to do with him being adventurous and fearless? No. It didn't take long for Bill to put the beast in a headlock, and he made the giant cat cry, Uncle! Does that show him being adventurous and fearless? Maybe. So we'll put a question mark there. He tried to run, but Bill, Bill was scooped up by the cyclone. Is that him being adventurous and fearless? Mm, kind of, but he tried to run from it, so he wasn't fearless. So Ma and Pa packed their belongings in a wagon, gathered their 15 children, and headed west. No. So your only answer that you can put is B. Why does the author include this simile in the story? Remember, similes have to use the words like or as, so, it's comparing the snake to a bootlace, and it's saying that the snake was as skinny as a bootlace. Okay? So, is it to show that Bill used the snake to tie his boots? Did it say anything about him tying his boots with the snake? No. Does it show that he defeated the snake? It does show that he defeated the snake, but let's just put a question mark to where we can go through and read the rest of them. To show that Bill used the snake as a lasso. Does it say anything about him using the snake as a lasso here? No. And to show that he liked to wrestle animals? It doesn't say that he liked to wrestle animals. We know that he did, but... Boys and girls, something I want you to remember is that tall tales are not real. These are not real people. So what can readers infer from this sentence? So what can we get from reading the sentence? Bill had never met anyone as wild as he was, and he quickly became sweet on old Sue, Slewfoot Sue. So is it that he fell in love with Sue? Let's see, it beca he became sweet, so that sounds positive, right? So that's a maybe. Did it say that they shared a meal together? No. Did he not like Sufutsu? Or Slufutsu? Doesn't say anything about that. 
And does it say that he was too wild for Sue? No. So the only answer that you can put is A. Number six. Which selection best states the main idea of paragraph four? So let's go back to paragraph four. One, two, three, four. Okay. It wasn't long before Pecos Bill wanted to start his own gang of cowboys. He set out in search of the toughest, mangiest, most fearless men he could find. Bill stumbled upon an angry rattlesnake while walking through the canyon. Some say the snake was as long as the equator, while others argue that it was five feet longer. The snake was fixing to have a real conniption. He shook his tail, opened his long fangs, and took a quick snap at Bill. The snake fought hard, but Bill fought harder. In a matter of minutes, Bill squeezed all the poison out of that snake, leaving him skinny as a bootlace. Bill draped the rattler around his neck and continued on his journey. Little did Bill know, a mountain lion as big as a rail car was watching him from a cliff. That ornery mountain lion pounced right on top of Bill, and the two wrestled in a cloud of dust. It didn't take long for Bill to put the beast in a headlock, and he made the giant cat cry uncle. Bill decided to saddle the mountain lion and ride him across the desert. So, the main idea of paragraph four, was it that his family moved west in a covered wagon? No. Did he marry Slewfoot Sue in this paragraph? No. Did he rustle animals? Like a rattlesnake and a mountain lion? He did. Did he round up a gang of cowboys to help him on the ranch in this paragraph? No. So the only answer you can choose is C. Number seven. Which of the following sentences is a fact? Some folks say they must have used their boot spurs to grab a hold of moon of the moon's craters. Is that a fact or an opinion? That's an opinion. The desert of Death Valley is still 280 feet below sea level until this very day. That is a fact. Some say the snake is, was as long as the equator, while others argue that it was five feet longer. Is that a fact? No, that's a hyperbole. So we're just going to put an H there. When the weather got too dry, Bill lassoed all the water from the Rio Grande and dumped it in the dried up grasses. Is that even possible? No. So, B is the only answer. The suffix ly helps readers know that the word happily means not happy. No, we know that they were happy. Very happy. Yeah, it could be. But let's keep going. In a happy way. Maybe. To be happy again. Did it say that they were ever unhappy? No. But the suffix ly means that it's going to be an adverb. So it can't be very happy. That would be an adjective. So, C is your correct answer. Which word could replace blistering as used in the sentence? One particularly blistering afternoon, a, the wagon train came to a river that needed crossing. So blistering could be like sunny, hot, oh would you look at that, the word hot is right there. I'll give you that one. And then for question 10 it says which choice best recounts the story? So it wants you to summarize it. So is it that Pecos Bill was raised by coyotes, he married Slewfoot Sue, he wrestled a mountain lion? Is it Pecos Bill wrestled mountain lions, bears, tigers, or lizards? Is it that he was the best cowboy in the Wild West, or that he was the first cowboy to ever live in Texas? So, while this summarizes the story, it doesn't do it in the best way. This one also doesn't summarize the whole story. It doesn't say that Pecos Bill was the first cowboy in Texas, so that leaves us with answer C.
Y'all have a great day. Miss Williams loves you.